So, welcome to the second match of the evening. Spawning to the bottom left of the map in red, it's our Protoss player Piscolita. And at the bottom right, in blue, it's our Terran Grizzly. So, hopefully this time everything's okay with the cast. We'll see how everything is going on in the meantime. So, Piscolita already... Oh, already doing an early scout? I don't know if this is only just a, for scouting purposes, so maybe Piscolita is doing a hard cheese here. There's only the first pylon down here, and with a pylon even the scout. I don't know if Piscolita is just worried, or if she normally scouts with the, the pylon scout, because it's a bit unusual to do so. Of course, it's only good for safety reasons, and maybe she just wants to get in before uh, Grizzly has the chance to close down this part of the depot, because now you see, if she had gone for the gateway count, the, uh, for the gateway scout, she wouldn't have been able to get in. But in this case, oh, we should be careful not to be uh, killed by SEVs, but also a lot of SEVs uh, just pulled from the mineral line in order to get down this probe. So Piscolita has already gotten a little win here, even getting the uh, working SEV and delaying the barracks once more. So this, SUV, uh, this probe even having a kill uh, on its own. So yeah, actually I think that was like the main reason why Piscolita chose to get over here, just to, in order to get in as long as she could. So now moving even out, so not losing the probe as well before the first marine arrives. So good play by Piscolita already uh, being annoying as fuck and uh, just throwing off Grizzly off her build. But so far she's managed quite well to keep down her minerals. So Nexus now by Piscolita. While well, we have a command center incoming by Grizzly as well, it's in base, so it's going to take some time to fly over here. So both players will have their natural ready to be saturated at almost the same time. So not a big advantage for either player here. But Piscolita having the supply block of death at 23. Pretty common supply block for a lot of players, I guess. So first the depth moving out. We have the Cybernetics core um, in place as well, researching the warp gate upgrade, which is also pretty normal. So again, we have to wait until Piscolita chooses a tech or fruit choice. And it's probably going to be something sneaky because she has a pylon set down here. It might also be just um, a scouting pylon for airdrops because the air distance is pretty short on this map, as you can see. So flying from here over to here is just a very short distance. And uh, you always want to be aware if a drop is incoming, so a lot of Protoss just try to secure the outskirts of their bases with pylons, uh, either to see the drop incoming or even to get rid of it with a photon overcharge if the mothership core is close by. So now finally the base is done and we have the possibility to saturate it. Same thing with Grizzly, she even waits until the command center has morphed into an open command and then transfers it. Ooh, this can be tricky, but the oh, not going down, which is a bit unfortunate right now. So in the meantime, she's just doing the double prong attack, luring away the Marines with the Mothership Core, while in the meantime we have one sneaky adept who just managed to get in because Grizzly had the anti-timing by lifting her barracks in order to get down this tech lab here, which was a bit unfortunate. And now she's already lost quite some workers down here. We have three kills already for that adept. He's probably going to try to get another one, but this time just shading away. Uh, can't get out one again because now the depots are finally closed. And now Grizzly has the chance to chase down that mm, pesky adept down here. But of course, basically just trying to make her best happen uh, in order to kill as much as she can. There it's no, it doesn't die again. It shades away, getting one more kill of drones and one more now. Five drone kill, all five drone kills already. Grizzly just falling apart here with 26 supply at the moment. And but still, she's she's keeping the mineral low while Piscolita is just going up to 800, almost 900 minerals. So this micro work actually seems to be more exhausting for her than for Grizzly. So Grizzly managed to do quite some okay ish defense although losing five workers, which is of course a bit problematic in the long run. But yeah, I think she's fine for now. Piscolina now retreating with the remaining adepts. She's finally had some time to... Um, she's finally had some time to saturate her base, but only eight probes so far. Okay, what's the next tech choice? We have a robotics facility incoming for detection first and more gateways. So it looks more massive. It looks as if it's going to be a massive gateway um, push, maybe mass adapts even, but do we have a 
This is a forge. This is another forge. No, we don't even have the resonating glaze upgrade incoming at all because we don't have a Twilight Council. So it's not going to be some massive death warp in shenanigans. Okay, in the meantime, we have um, Combat Shield on the way. Is Stim already finished? No, it's. Ah, there it is. Okay, so Stim is on its way. Close to finish. And there we have the second base finally going down. So a lot later than we expected to it to happen, but of course mostly due to the pesky harassment that Piscalita did. Okay, Observer going over, so Piscalita will get a good idea of what her opponent is up to. She sees a tank, she sees some marines. Well, the tank's a bit unusual actually for Terran versus Protoss, but some people try to do it anyways. Uh, just going tank marine like in TVT, and it might work at some point if you manage to get the tanks into a good position and uh, the opponent's army is mostly gateway based, it can work. So there we have the missile turret. I don't know if she just put it there for safety reasons or if she's just seen the overseer uh, moving over her army, a little shadow uh, that you can see. Piscalita going for third base in just a few seconds once it hits 400 minerals. So even having an observer over here. So nice observer play by Piscalita. I like that a lot. She has a lot of vision, except maybe for the region where it matters most, uh, the region where Terrans usually drop so and do their drop play. So this is a bit... Uh, yeah, that, that's actually when I'm a bit worried. So if uh, Grizzly decided to load some units inside a medivac and just try to get back here, I mean, sure, there's the pylon, but I mean, if the if the medevac is over here and then just boost in, your your pylon just won't help you that much. So maybe she, that's the way. Uh, that's the reason why she has these two stalkers back here now as well to be safe. I, I think she's just realized as well. Damn, I don't have any vision of that backdoor region. So maybe I should just have some more drop defense over here by having these two stalkers put down. Okay, now basically the sees a small army moving across the map. Just a few units probably just trying to take the Zalnaga tower in order to see what's happening here. Piscalita moves out with a chunk of her army, actually with all of her army. So we have plus two, plus two incoming already, so good upgrade work for her, while it's zero zero for Grizzly. So better upgrades, a bigger, a bigger chunk of army, so Grizzly has to retreat for now. Yeah, third base now up, Piscalita is trying to get it saturated while there's actually no third base whatsoever for Grizzly, so the more time passes by, she's actually all in, maybe without even knowing it. Oh, Grizzly really, Grizzly really worried about Templar, uh, about Dark Templar play. That's probably why she has the Raven in here. I mean, of course, you can also use PDDs against Stalkers, and they're quite helpful, but mainly it should be for detection reasons. So there's the drop we were talking about, and there are the four Stalkers right now, so Piscalita really sacrificing a lot of her um, army supply and resources for drop defense, but this might work out quite well. Oh, very nicely watched by Grizzly here. Just sees the stalkers immediately and pulls back. So nothing lost here, but nothing gained as well. And this is maybe the most problematic part. Of course, losing the drop would have been awful, but just doing nothing might be as problematic as losing it. Well, nah, of course, losing it is, is much worse. But yeah, not doing anything at that point. Nice scout here by Grizzly. She just tried to get back to the Zelnaga Tower, um, seeing that the Protoss army is coming her way. So a bit lucky here, but of course now she knows that something is coming her way. She unloads the uh, drop back inside her main base. I mean, this, this base really is fortified quite heavily. So it's really, really, it would be really problematic for a Protoss player to move in there. The biggest problem right now is that Piscalita doesn't even need to get in there because she already has her third base up. She has Storm incoming, she has Charge incoming, she has more upgrades incoming while Grizzly is just on 1-0. So she has all the advantages she needs. Actually it's Grizzly uh, that needs to do something before she gets behind just too far. It even might be too late already. Yeah, especially once Storm comes out, and uh, are there some Templars already on the field? Yes, Templars having enough energy, so wow, now a fight becomes so much harder. So it really depends how Grizzly takes this first battle. I mean, if she manages to get a good angle with the drops, 
uh, with the tanks already being dropped and uh, in position so that the first few shots will hit the army very well. She might be able to make something happen. Ah, sees the army incoming very well. But Piscolita knowing everything. Oh, I don't know if I like this a lot. She just unloads the tanks right in front of her army. Now the storms are just coming in. She has to leave the tanks behind and they are just killed off immediately. That were actually her heavy hitters and she's lost them just for nothing actually. Not, not really doing any amount of damage. Only just, yeah, getting off some shields of the Protoss units, maybe some life. But that was a way bigger hit for Grizzly than it was for Piscolita. And now, yeah, Piscolita is just a little bit uncertain. She doesn't want to lose a one game. Uh, just checks for a third base, sees that it isn't here. Maybe wants to check for this base as well. No, she doesn't. Now she walks in, sees that there's not much that uh, Terran has to defend here. Moves in there, has to be careful. I mean, there's a lot of units inside these bunkers. But yeah, the, it's just Templar is doing so much damage. The units are already on 2-2, as we said. And uh, another storm just to finish the deal. Piscolita walks over this. There's nothing Grizzly can do right here. Uh, another last tank trying to uh, seal off her main base. But now, of course, the SEVs has to have to move in as well. And that's with uh, an economy in shambles as much as Grizzlies. Even if she managed to stop that push, which she won't, uh, it would be over here. Because she has nothing to come back from. And um, yeah, Piscolita probably just waiting for the GG. Uh, just She doesn't want to move inside the tank fire, so she just retreats for now. Because she's done enough damage, and like I said, okay, in the meantime, Grizzly just tries to take the sneaky base to get back into the game. I don't really know if that's going to work. Uh, it's her third base. I don't know if she really wanted to take it there right from the get-go. It seems almost as if she wanted to do that. But yeah, now Piscolita is just working at the third base. I think a proxy pylon would be nice, or even a warp prism, of course. And there it is. So Piscolita now going for warp prism. She's just preparing her next push that's going to finish Grizzly off. Like I said, she's she's pushed it back for now. I think if Piscolita really wanted to commit at that, uh, had really wanted to commit at that point, she could have just crushed through this, losing a lot of uh, units in the meantime or in the process, but I think she could have done it. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, Grizzly just tries to move out. Unfortunately runs right into the chunk of the army that Piscolita left at her third base and loses again uh, a lot of worthy, oh, uh, a lot of valuable units at the point while Piscolita is taking the fourth base. So ladies and gentlemen, this game is actually over. Um, Grizzly prolonging the game a little bit. She might not be aware of how far behind she really is, but I think this final push should seal the deal. GG, and it's 1-0 for Piscolita. It's the second game of the series, and spawning to the top left position, it's the Red Protoss Piscolita. And to the top right, to the top right, it's the Blue Terran Grizzly. Going for a full wall off once more. Which is quite usual for Terrans these days, because you don't want to have these pesky shading adepts inside your base. So that's why you normally build a full wall off against Protoss. Normally no one did that back in Heart of the Swarm or Wings of Liberty. It was pretty uncommon to do a full wall off against Protoss. It was actually at often times um, problematic to do so, because Protoss then just... Uh, could fire with stalkers from down here, having a mothership core just out of range of units on the high ground, but delivering vision of the high ground, so that stalkers or other units could just fire up and picking off these depots without Terran being able to do anything. So you normally wanted uh, to have units, uh, buildings away from your, from your choke point uh, in order to be able to push out more easily. So yeah, but a lot has changed with Legacy of the Void and now all Terrans wall off against Protoss. Like I said, just because of the potential threat of Adepts. So in the meantime, Pescalia just moving around down here. She wants to try and take an early base after having the gateway built and the Cybernetics core already on its way. So pretty common opening, even not that greedy as just a gateway and then the expand into the Cybernetics core. Mm -hmm. So quite safe, 
quite normal, nothing unusual from both players here so far. Okay, second barracks incoming and two gases before a potential, oh, even three barracks. Okay, so this looks as if Grizzly is really trying to do a one base all in, maybe with drops or something, because the two, ga the two gases, the two early gases, wouldn't make much sense anywhere uh, otherwise. My god, my English is bad this evening, I'm sorry for that. Uh, maybe it was never that good to begin with, but let's not discuss this. So yeah, the uh, the two gas uh, wouldn't make sense otherwise. And the problem is, of course, with now having all the workers dedicated to mining at all the several parts of the base, you will hardly get enough minerals. You shouldn't at least get enough minerals together in order to put down another base here. So that's, of course, problematic. So SCV just trying to find her opponent. So, and this really seems as if she wants to throw down a factory very early on and then um, a starport and then maybe try to move out with everything she has. Maybe dropping at one place while running into the front with the other half of the army. Uh, there's the, but that's of course the unfortunate event now. There's the Mothership Core seeing everything, getting at least a lot of information. Well, not everything, but seeing at least two barracks here. Plus knowing that there's probably one more barracks that's sealing off the entrance to the main base. Uh, I think that Piscalina now knows what she's up against. So she should build some more gateways actually maybe to fend this off. Well, she's trying a Stargate build. Let's see if this is going to work out. Um, Grizzly just patrolling her marines in order to um, intercept the... Mothership Core wants it tries to get in again. And there's the command center. Okay, maybe I was wrong after all, but it's just an odd build to be honest. So I think that she's capable of building a command center is just due to her supply block. Um, because she's heavily supply blocked right now and she can't really produce out of all her buildings. If she was able to do so, she uh, wouldn't have that much money left in order to build another command center. So yeah, I'm not quite sure, but like I said, it's straight going into the starport. Maybe even a Banshee play? No. There's a tank. Okay, so it looks as if she... I don't know if she doesn't want to drop anymore because now... What, what's she doing? I mean, now she can't really drop because she doesn't have any dropships to do that. Okay, let's see what happens in Piscolita's base. Actually, not much. There are more gateways incoming while the first, uh, the second Phoenix is on its way. Mm, Phoenix is just for drop protection and that might actually just do it. I mean, if Grizzly finally decides to produce... I, th I think this is just a mistake. No, now she lands it down here for Banshees? For Liberators? Probably Liberators, right? So what's coming our way? It is a Raven. Okay, I, I'm, I'm officially surprised by now. So I don't really know what she's going to do. I mean, again, if you stay on one base less than your opponent for too long, the economic advantage will at some time cause a massive problem for you because you, your opponent will just outproduce you. So even if you manage to do, or even if you manage to build um, a very well composition against what your opponent has, it's just not enough units and he will overrun you or she will overrun you in this case anyways. So you ha normally have to decide whether you want to do an early push, a very aggressive push with a lot of potential and crush him before he gets that advantage. Or well, that's it. I mean, if you, if you heavily commit to production buildings that early on in the game and then you don't push, it's, it's really problematic. I mean, you still might be able to hit um, a window where your opponent while having the economic advantage, just doesn't have enough units to defend your push. But if you miss it, you're just screwed. So, and I think actually that is what Grizzly's... What was unfortunately going to happen to Grizzly here. Trying to fend off these um, annoying little phoenix over here that Piscolita just uses every once in a while to pick off some workers, even picking up some of these units, because if you have enough of them, you can even pick up four to five units, killing them off um, with enough Phoenix on the way. Just moving in, getting all the scout information she could ever wish for, now getting even more drones, just killing them off. Have to be careful not to lose a Phoenix, but actually at 
the point we're at well, at the point we're at right now, it doesn't really matter that much. So there's the army now moving out with a raven, probably for DTs, maybe, maybe for a PDD. I'm not quite certain. In the meantime, Piscalita is even taking her third base, but it doesn't it doesn't really matter. I mean, even if she lost the third base, she could really afford that right now. Of course, it would be bad to let that happen. But let's see. Okay, Phoenix is still moving around, killing off some workers. Actually, Piscalita doesn't have that much units on the ground. Oh, that many units on the ground, I'm sorry. So let's have a look. Well, it's 13 adepts. Where, where the hell are they? Where are the adepts? Oh, they're all back here because, yeah, Pescalito was just thinking the same thing I was. That Grizzly was trying to do a massive doom drop into her main base. So all the units are back here. So this third base is going down for certain. Nothing that uh, Pescalito can do here. Ooh, not even cancelling it. That was, of course, um, a little mistake there. Well, even a big mistake. Something that shouldn't really have happened. Uh, now she's moving back with all her units, trying to get all her ground units in position while coming in with the phoenixes from behind, maybe even getting all these tanks here. Yeah, and this is actually not even enough for all the ground units. It doesn't really matter. There's even a PD no, there's even a... Okay, that was actually a nice hit with the um, Hunter Sika missile there, but it didn't even kill a lot of units. So even with only ground units, um, Piscalita could have held that easily. And now we're at the position I was talking about, so Grizzly is down to 50 supply. If we have a look at the work account, it's 25 to 46, so almost doubling the work account. And if we have a look at the income, it doesn't show as much right now, probably due to mules. No, not even due to mules. Then maybe it's just a better saturation down here. It's 15, 16, it's 19, 8. Yeah, that's actually the biggest problem. That's why Piscalita was really desperate to get that um, to get that Nexus down. Um, uh, but now she has to rebuild it. In the meantime, her um, income actually just drops. So it's not as bad as it looks because her opponent just has so much more workers, but she can't really use them effectively. Uh, still, Piscalita just trying to kill everything off that's just unguarded by or unprotected by a turret. And uh, even if there is a turret, she can just fly in, pick off one or two probes, uh, SEVs in this case, and uh, just fly out once more, just having taken some hull damage or maybe even only shield damage. And there's not much Grizzly can do against that. And every time she has to... I don't actually know why she just moves back and tries to proper repair her turrets because Phoenix can't attack turrets. And this is just awful to watch in that case. She doesn't even have enough units to uh, shoot up in the air. Sorry for that. To shoot up in the air to kill these phoenixes back here. Yeah, I think I think Grizzly can only tap out at that point. I mean, the third base is now down. Piscuita can now finally saturate it. The economy should get better every second now. And now we see how the distance just gaps away. Uh, I think there was just one mule thrown down. Oh, three mules at, at the moment. So this is actually what explains why Terran can still keep up for a few more seconds before um, the Protoss economy will finally be totally overwhelming. And there's nothing much left to say. I mean, Grizzly is at 53 to 140. No aggression coming out of her and actually no way to get any aggression over to her opponent. So more, yeah, okay, even intercepting this little uh, this little push over here, getting all the marines lifted. Now she will even be able to just lift all these marauders if she wants to. Still picking off one marine at a time and one more, killing them off. So, yeah, like I said, I mean, this is three marauders crossing the map with stim, even being stimmed. Uh, they will run out of stim before they arrive at... Piscalita's base and Piscalita can just actually again intercept them with a quick phoenixes if she finds them before they reach uh, any building. Uh, Grizzly uh, probably assumes that her opponent was expanding over here once more. Uh, or at least no, she just wants to check for the fourth base. It's just trying to be set down. And there's the ground army incoming. It's just too big. There's not much that Grizzly can do from here. But she doesn't want to give up yet, I guess. But yeah, I'm sorry, I, I mean, I can't really hype that. There's not much to hype here. She only has a handful of units. Uh, the supply counts are totally clear on that. Uh, now tries to move away. Does this observer see that SCV? I think it didn't. So maybe she might be able to get another sneaky expansion down here, which wouldn't be that sneaky because it's a total, totally normal 
placement or totally normal place uh, to put down <laughs> and even producing more more phoenixes and more phoenixes and even more phoenixes we're now at a time where she can just fly in and kill the entire worker line maybe losing two to three phoenixes in the process it doesn't really matter okay and now actually this little overseer sees everything i mean why would these workers stand over here if there wasn't a command center to be built but she actually doesn't have enough money to build it can't even lift any buildings because the big oh and now even the mules not muling any, anything here and just wasting their mining time because it's uh, the main base is mined out fourth base up for Piscolita almost um, it's three three on the way and almost through I don't actually know what Piscolita is waiting for I mean she just she could I mean of course it's the Terran's duty to put the pressure on you in this uh, uh, at uh, this phase on uh, of the at this phase of a normal match, but I mean, Piscolita should know that she's way ahead by uh, by killing so much off in the early game. And I mean, I mean, the phoenixes alone could kill this army. It's it's just sad like that. Uh, but the phoenixes could the phoenixes all of the phoenixes could lift all of this army, and there would still be phoenixes left to shoot that. So, like I said, what is what is Grizzly supposed to do? Uh, there's the there's the main army incoming. <laughs> I mean, look at that! It's so many adepts. <laughs> it's more adept than than. <laughs> nice splitting here, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, these these poor guys just sacrifice to save the lives of the remaining units. But like I said, uh, she could just pick up everything and kill it. So this is over. Now moving in, into the second base. I'm just shading the adepts onto the poor bunker that's already dead before the adepts can finally reintegrate. Okay, there's a PFF incoming. Grizzly realizes it's GG. And Piscolita takes, oh, um, just furthers her advantage to 2-0. Oh. We're on King Sejong Station. This is the third game of the series. Spawning to the top left position in blue, it's the Terran from Cloud M, it's Grizzly. And to the bottom right position in red, playing for SGTL, it's the Red Protoss Piscalita. Leading 2 0. She only needs to take one more game, and then she's taken the series. Whoop. So, probably, probably normal gateway spawned by Piscolita. While Grizzly again trying to get a wall of done, but again Piscolita manages to get one drone in. Ah, one probe, not one drone. Uh, manages to get one probe in. Oh, again pulling two SEVs in order to get that probe. Um, yeah, just pulling one back to the minerals. Ah, could have gotten it maybe there um, between all the workers. But this time she saved her SEV. Uh, that builds on the Rex. Okay, has to pull another one. And uh, getting back that uh, SCV back to mining. Yeah, pretty annoying if Protoss does that. And now she finally could uh, seal the deal, which she does right now. So in the meantime, we have a Subnetics Core incoming for Piscolita. Nothing special, so probably a Gateway Expand after the Subnetics Core. And there's the X-Pawn for Grizzly, again in base. She wants to play it safe. Having the refinery almost done. While well, the probe is getting back to its home location. And there's the Nexus. While some gas is being mined, yeah, the one gas opening is pretty typical for fiscal leaders play. First adept incoming. 
Here it goes. Yeah, and the SUV will get destroyed without any kind of important information. Of course, she now knows that it's not a one-base play, but that's very uncommon for Protoss nowadays. I mean, if she really had been going for a one-base all-in, it would already hit right now, so the information would... Uh, she would have gotten the information too late anyways. Okay, another adept walking across the map, so it seems as if she goes for some early aggression with some adepts. And uh, yeah, you really have to be careful. The adepts can do a lot of damage, so it has to close off uh, the deal. So Piscalita now has to cancel the shade, no problem here. But she's done some early aggression. And she moves across the map with the Mothership Core as well, and maybe even with a second... No, these, this adept is still at home. I think with two adepts and a Mothership Core, this might have been really problematic without a bunker. There the bunker is coming in, but of course if she hits with both units at the same time, this this might cause some trouble. Yeah, again, she tries to... Yeah, she, she's, did, she's done that before, where she just attacks at one side of the map and uh, tries to bait the units to move towards her mothership core then moving in with the adept but this time she decides to not to probably because there's nothing here she can attack with the mothership core for now so she just retreats with it uh, moves it back towards her own base uh, but having more gateways incoming a lot of gateways actually we almost have four ready but there's no proxy pot on anything. There's a warp prism incoming. So it seems that Piscalita goes will go for a massive warp in of gateway units and uh, try to tear Grizzly down in this third game. So in the meantime, Grizzly just trying to get her uh, natural base saturated, trying to get stim, but it's still ages away. So, now finally ready to get some medivacs, oh, even getting some vision across here. The biggest problem is, of course, that these watchtowers, normally it's quite handy to have watchtowers in your possession, but um, the problem is that on this map especially, if you don't really, there are a lot of routes where uh, a watchtower will just barely not see um, whatever is moving across the map, or not fully, I mean, you can just move across the map as you wish and no watchtower will see it. And if you take the all-around route, a watchtower will not spot it as well. So you have to be a bit unlucky in order to be seen by a watchtower, to be completely honest. Later on in the game, it becomes actually quite valuable. Like once you take this base or this base, it's pretty good to know when an army is moving into the direction of your base. But there's the big warp end we were talking about. So there's the warp prism, nothing to shoot it down right now. We have a lot of adepts now moving into the middle line and even some adept shading into the back of the middle line. There's the rest of the army now moving in. It doesn't have stim, mind you. So they won't dish out that much damage uh, at first. Now all of the SCVs are in front of the army, dying to the dying to the attack of um, Piscalita here. And so she even morphs, uh, or warps in more units. Now tries to micro them back, trying to kill as many SCVs and units as she can. Finally, Grizzly gets to the warp prism, shoots it down, and... Um, trying to well at this point she's got rid of it but there are more adapts coming from the right angle was there another no there's another warp prism so she actually went for the two warp prism adapt build that is so imba okay and now she's also lost all of her units down here to the natural base grizzly just tries to make something happen with the two medivacs but she already realizes this is too much damage gg's out and piscalita takes the game convincingly with a 3-0